right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1996 Nissan 300ZX 2 Plus 2. Up front is a 3.0 liter V6 and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here 300ZX for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is a Z32 generation of the Z cars and I have fallen in love with this generation. I recently did a turbocharged automatic two seater last year and I really loved that, but it wasn't manual. I wanted to try one with a manual and so we're doing that here today. The second reason I'm super excited to be driving this is because it has 305 thousand miles on it and honestly there's not many places you can tell and so we'll be diving deeper into that and seeing what has worked and what has failed over 305,000 miles. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack or a big friggin' bottle sticker, both with free shipping. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that three liter V6 under the hood. Well, it makes about 222 horsepower, which isn't anything crazy, but for a naturally aspirated V6, especially from the 90s, I'm definitely happy with it. Now, the Z32 is a lot more updated than its predecessor. This gets VVT, as well as dual overhead cams, where the Z31 didn't. It's still a VG30, but now it's a DE instead of just an E because it adds those dual overhead cams. Driving it in its stock form, I think it's really, really good. I like the VG30. It's just a good engine in my book. It takes up a little bit too much space in the engine bay, in my opinion, really crammed in there. However, I think it works well. And as you're probably hearing, this car does have a muffler delete that was actually done by the owner. That's not a defect in the muffler. Like I said, paired to it, five speed manual transmission, it shifts nice and smooth, great clutch feel, great engagement feel, and I love it. I really, truly love it. Last but not least, of course, the 300ZX is rear wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four physical gauges. On the left is my coolant temperature. In the center, I get my speedometer and tachometer, as well as oil pressure. And then on the right, I get my fuel. And down below, we get our analog odometer, which is reading 305,000 miles. But coming off the gauge cluster, on the left, I have my defrost, cruise control, and fog lights, as well as my headlight switches. And off to the right, I have my climate control settings with this little digital screen. I really love this. The buttons feel fantastic. They feel nice and solid, which isn't what I would expect out of a 90s car, but here it is. I also love the space aginess of them sort of coming off of the gauge cluster. Kind of feel like I'm in a starship. Moving on to the steering wheel, I have two little thumb buttons for my horn, but that's it. Moving on to the door, I have a vent as well as my power windows and power locks. And moving into the center, I have more climate control vents and the original Bose radio. So you could get an upgraded radio in 1996. That was a Bose unit and here it is. And when we talk about the hatch, we'll take a look at some more Bose speakers as well, but they're found in the doors as well as the rear hatch. Then I have more audio options with my three compact disc auto changer. So I can have three CDs in my 300ZX, which is pretty nice. And then I get a nice little digital clock. The shifter, boot, and knob are not factory. However, I think they look great, feel great, and the actual shifter feel, that is stock when it actually goes into the gate, and I think it feels fantastic. Moving down the center console, I do have an openable ashtray and cigarette lighter. I have a parking brake off to the right, and my power mirror options down below that. Of course, I get a little storage center console, but that's it, meaning that the 300ZX does not have any cup holders, so on that basis, it fails the big friggin' bottle test. The seats are nice and comfortable. They're finished in this nice dark black leather. I love the look of it, very 90s, but very period correct. And honestly, as I've been saying for 305,000 miles, can't really tell. But speaking of seats, this is a two plus two. So let's go talk about the back seats for the first time in a Z32. Tim, I know you said there's no chance and I agree with you but I have to show the viewers how little chance there is. I don't fit back here. People don't fit back here. He has a younger brother that will fit back here fine. He's in the single digits of age. Sure, use that for this, but if you wanna fit a human back here, 
don't do it. We'll talk about some specifics with the actual chassis changes of the 2 plus 2 when we talk about the exterior, but personally, if you're thinking, oh, a 300ZX with usable back seats, stop thinking that. Stop thinking that right now. I'm serious. <laughs> These are not usable at all. Let's go take a quick look at the trunk and then we'll talk about looks. All right, so we're on the back of the 300ZX. I popped it from inside, but you pull this big hatch up and there you go. You get tons of space back here, which is really nice. And you can fold those back seats. Again, a really nice feature. Here are the Bose speakers I was talking about. So you get one here, one over there, obviously. These are holders or little bags, travel bags for the glass T-top. So you can see this car does have the T-tops, beautiful. And you can put them into these nice storage bags. This car still has it. It also still has the privacy cover that will roll out. However, the owner said that it's incredibly hard to roll back in just because of its old age. So I will not be pulling that out today. Tons of space back here. I always praise 90s hatchbacks in this era, like the FD, for having great trunk areas. And the 300ZX is no different. Now we got to talk about the looks. And first of all, I love the look of the 300ZX. It does look a little bit smooshed, but I love that characteristic of it. Very bubbly, very 90s. I do love the tail lights as well. And of course you have to love the headlights because well, they're from a Diablo. Well, really the Diablo's headlights are from a Nissan. But overall, I think the Z32 looks fantastic. I love the wheels as well. I think overall just great, great package. One thing I do wanna note about the exterior, however, is the gas cap location. Because this is a two plus two and has the back seats, this is actually longer than the 300ZX that doesn't come with back seats. The physical chassis is actually longer. So an easy way to tell if it has back seats or not, if you look at the gas cap, if the gas cap is in front of the rear wheel, it doesn't have back seats, but then they moved it to behind the back wheel when it does have back seats. Kind of an interesting design choice by Nissan. And I feel like there might've been a better way without having to redesign the rear quarter panel, but hey, I don't work for Nissan. But now let's get to my final thoughts here on the 1996 Nissan 300ZX 2 Plus 2. Well, in terms of a car, I really, really love it. Is the turbo faster? Yes. Not by as much as I would have thought. Yes, there's a gap, but we're talking about feet and not miles. I think the overall driving dynamics are great. It has good road feel. Putting it into a corner feels nice and solid. I have faith in the car. It's predictable, and I'm very, very happy with the NA300ZX as a whole. If you're looking to buy one, there you go. But now we do have to touch on the fact that this has 305,000 miles, one of the highest mileage cars I've ever reviewed here on the channel. And the honest truth is, you can't really tell from looking at it. Okay, looking at the front bumper, the front bumper was repainted because of an accident. And you can see on the fender, yes, there's a lot of rock chips. This was a highway commuter car. There's a dent in the back and the power antenna seems to have adapted its own schedule for when it likes to go up and down. It still goes up and down, but it just doesn't really warn you. It'll go up, it'll go down. It'll go to sleep, it'll wake up, that's okay. But besides those tiny, minuscule points, this car is still driving, it still feels good. Yeah, the motor's a little tired. It's a little noticeably tired in spots. But not all the spots. <laughs> oh, it feels good. Good. It feels so good. And overall, I just, I can't believe how good of a car Nissan designed with the Z32. I mean, it's not an easy task to go 300,000 miles and some. And yet this car has done it nearly flawlessly on the original engine and original transmission. And the owner actually pointed out that these T-tops don't leak. They don't leak. How? Every 90s T-top leaks, but not these, not these. You know, I review a lot of cars here on the channel, and when I review a car, I'm all about it. I'm talking about it, I'm learning about it, I'm sharing. But then I get in my own personal car, and I go home, and I edit the video, and I upload it. And then I don't really think much about the car after that, if I'm being quite honest. I've reviewed over 770 cars, how could I? But every once in a while, there's a car that creeps in, a car that I start thinking about 
fantasizing about. And it starts with an easy fantasy, yes, but then it goes to the Facebook marketplace searches and the Craigslist searches and the cars.com searches. And then I build them in my favorite video game and I drive them in that. And then they become solidified as one of the all-time greats in my head. And I'm happy to report that the 300ZX, turbo and now non-turbo, have done that. This car in my mind is one of the greats. And I love the fact that I was able to drive such an interesting case study as this with 305,000 miles. I mean, if you want the notation of a great car, you look at the high mileage ones. So let this be an example of what's possible when you take care of your car properly and when a manufacturer does its job and builds something truly, truly timeless like the 300ZX. Two plus two. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Tim for letting me take out his 300ZX. I was so excited to drive this car with the mileage, condition, everything together, finally driving a manual Z32. That is all thank you to Tim. The video is made possible by Tim, and I can't thank him enough, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.